This is Bugatti HQ, where their mission is to reach for the sky. As far as I'm concerned, the first hypercar was the Bugatti EB110, the first car to reach 60 miles per hour in around three seconds, and it had a kind of boxy look. It was like the Tyson Fury of hypercars. When Bugatti returned with the Veyron, they returned in force in 2005 with speeds of 250 miles per hour. It was totally unprecedented, like the invention of supersonic air travel in the Concorde. And that leads us to this moment, the Bugatti Chiron Super Sport. This car is an exercise in unbelievable numbers. 1,600 horsepower, 2.4 seconds to 60, electronically limited to 273 miles per hour, but unrestricted, it would go on to 304 miles per hour, the fastest speed ever achieved by any production road car. I drove the Veyron Supersport on Top Gear some years ago, so Drive Tribe has sent me to see how this compared. It turns out that Mike chose an abysmal week to be on holiday. The statistics with this machine are just mind-blowing. I mean, the Veyron was impressive. The engine was consuming 45,000 litres of air a minute. This one's consuming 60,000 litres of air a minute to power this engine when it's really going for it. Michelin could only get the tyres to be rated to run at top speed for 15 minutes, but never been tested because you ran out of fuel in 12. In fact, that's the only thing you've got to worry about when you're driving a car this potent is remembering where the next petrol station is and making sure that it's got the correct run for this beast. But the attack of air hitting this car at speeds above 200 miles an hour, the aero forces are just ridiculous. The centrifugal force in the tyres, 5,000 G, and something like 4,000 kilograms of aero pressure flying around this car. So the balancing act to get this car to prevent it from flipping over even at 300 miles per hour was a real mind tease for the engineers when they built this thing. But to help reduce drag, the car was elongated by 25 centimetres. You've got that little extra piece of aero at the back that just made the car cut through the air that bit better. It gave it more of the teardrop shape, which you know gives more aero efficiency. The boost of power, obviously, from this reconfigured engine, significantly different from the original 16-cylinder motor, the 8-litre beast powering this baby. The physical block of the engine is pretty much the same, but 80% of the internals revised from the Veyron to the Chiron to give it that big jump in power to 1500 and more fine tuning to bring the Super Sport up to 1600. The way this Chiron goes about demolishing stretches of road is beyond impressive, but there's more to the Super Sport than outright speed. The cabin is a wonderful place to be, an elegant blend of reassuringly tactile leather and extruded aluminium. It feels more spacious than the Veyron, but there's a bit of an optical illusion at play. Bugatti have shrunk the gear selector, the controls are more slender, but it gives a sense of agility. The question is, does that translate onto the road? You do tend to feel it in the front end first, just clawing at the tarmac. Frankly, I prefer it that way than feeling the rear end of this baby swing around. There's just too much going on. You're operating at such a high level of grip. You don't want the tail swinging around at will. Oh, oh, oh. Woohoo! What an absolute beast. The car really welcomes you in. It does hug the corners, it's fantastic. In the banked corners, you really feel it tucking in. The irony is that with this much power, it's basically the equivalent of an M3 on each wheel. 1,600 horsepower, you've got to break that down. 400 horsepower per tyre. It's just unbelievable. It's just been harnessed so beautifully into this really easy to drive package. That's thanks to the depth and breadth of engineering that goes into these speed machines. Because at Bugatti, over-engineering is just the starting point. It's not good enough for their cars to simply be fast. They must be refined, impeccably built, and ready to defy physics at any given moment. That'll do doesn't exist in the Bugatti vocabulary. I've been driving this for a while now, and I'm realizing that I, actually, I still haven't put my foot to the floor. My instinct is just saying, just keep it on the island. I and mean, we're surrounded by trees, I guess. There's the odd damp patch on the road, close to zero degrees, so maybe there might be a little bit of ice, but come on, Ben. This is what we're here for. 
but the car's telling me too, because it's telling me just very gently that I've only used 1,384 bhp. There's a little gauge here that tells you that. So I have still got some capacity left. So, oh, it's just, you just feel there's so much power there that you've just got to give it the respect that it's due. So much respect, in fact, that I need a chaperone to keep me in check. Although I won't complain, as my co-driver for the day is this bloke. Andy Wallace, winner of the Holy Trinity, Le Mans, Daytona, three times winner, Sebring. Two times? You've won that? That's it. <laughs> Dude, thank you very much for um, guiding me through this. It's, um, it's an absolute honour to be um, in this car with you as my chaperone. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for scaring the living daylights out of me. Already? Yeah, we've only <laughs> just got started, so... You've worked on this project for how long? I've been at Bugatti for 11 years, and I've had an absolute ball. Every day is different, and every day is amazing in this car. Yeah, but you were the one, you pinned it to 304 miles an hour, is that right? 304.7724, yeah. if you don't mind. Okay. What does that feel like? I'll tell you what, it is pretty terrifying in some ways, because stuff is coming at you so fast. You, you pass a kilometre in seven seconds, or a mile in 11 and change. Yeah. Everything's coming towards you. There's all sorts of things to think about, but what a feeling when you've done it. It's amazing. It's an, it is incredible. But for daily running, so this car, although it's not the 300 plus model, it's still the Chiron Super Sport. It is capable of 300 miles an hour if you put it into the right mode. It's still capable it, of that speed. It is. I mean, we electronically limit it to 273. That's so enough. That's much more sensible. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And I'm right in thinking. This car also has launch control. Yes, it does. Do you want to try it? I would like to try it. Definitely like to try it. Go for I, it. This is a straight bit of road here. So I put my G sensor up. Absolutely. I brought this. One of those high-tech G sensors. It's very high-tech. Here we go. Um, a little air freshener. That's going to do that. Right. Brake on. Maximum pressure. Press the launch control button. It's engaged. Full power. Oh, feel the wheel spin. Bloody hell. Woo That was amazing. That let rip on the rear, didn't it? Obviously, that was in the correct launch mode. That took what? Two, it's 2.3 seconds to 60 miles an hour, isn't it? It did, yep. And I was looking at your gauge and yeah. I saw it was 1.5 G. Okay, excellent. Perfect. But we did get wheel spin, so the car is allowing some slip. Is that right? To get yeah, it? in order to get off the line quickly, if you limit all the slip, it just restricts the car. So yep. you need some slip to get going. Yep. And so it allows, it allows that. But then something changed, because so I felt that and it was the rear axle I felt going, because the first time to be driving around, I felt that. So it released on the rear, and then it just suddenly, all four just went as a one -er, and it just had that massive surge of power. And my, my brain, I felt some compression in my brain. Did you also have this sort of feeling? Yeah, I, I got felt a bit dizzy. Slight uh, bruises on the back of my eyes, yeah. where they hit the back of the sockets. It's uh, just phenomenal. Great feeling, though. Absolutely amazing. Corner hugging the G Force, and there's no G suit. I mean, basically, it is like flying a fighter jet at ground level. That's what this is. It's got the same sort of performance 2G under braking from these carbon ceramic brakes. There we are, full power. <laughs> yeah, once she giddies up, you're just in another world. I mean, I realize that a lot of people do all these tests on the straights, they can see why, but this is where. This car also is a hunter killer. Drivable power, you just can't be on full power the whole time. That's just not real world. Can't do 300 miles an hour going to the shops or driving up this mountain. The true test is in the cornering and it's just wonderful. The car is just taunting me though, saying, come on, you haven't got it in you to give me the full beans, but I'm trying and I'm working at it. Warp speed very, very quickly. That little voice just whispering all the time. Engage the warp drive, give it full power. For me, it feels like Bugatti has really come of age with the Chiron. The Super Sport seems to achieve two almost impossible goals to increase the performance from the original Veyron by a huge factor, but at the same time making it accessible. This car isn't difficult to drive, it's, it's really easy. It feels light on its feet, balanced. It's taken the Veyron, which perhaps at times was a fraction wooden, a little bit heavy in the controls, not so keen to change direction. 
eradicated that and created something that is really talking to the driver all the time. Sure, there are other car makers that will take up these challenges of beating physics the way Bugatti has, and some will achieve it, but few will match the flawless execution of sophisticated styling and robust engineering in every part of the machine. And it's not just about looks. The design oozes confidence, like an Egyptian pyramid. Bugatti have achieved a seemingly impossible task, delivering hyper-performance in the form of a simple tool that anybody could use for cruising around. On that note alone, it's worth every penny of the 3.5 million.